ARUP is really a jewel here for the University of Utah in general and then more specifically for the health sciences. It has enhanced the campus in so many different ways. We have 2,700 dedicated employees. We have the best turnaround time in the industry. We serve a thousand hospitals nationwide. We embrace the newest technologies. 50,000 tubes of blood arriving every day. We have a refrigerator, which is one of the largest in the world. It's a three-story high refrigerator, which can house about three million tubes of blood. ARUP is an amazing company. We can do everything here. So to begin with, we only had a handful of tests that we did that other labs did not do. Chase Peterson, the president of the university, had an entrepreneurial bent. My office helped a little bit here and there, but mostly it was just the power of people believing in what this could be done. It was an evolution that was very carefully orchestrated in not to do it faster than what we had the capability. The number of specimens that came to the laboratory were maybe 50 a day if we were lucky. What we were interested in is just from day to day, can we get enough reference work in here to save the department? It took us five years before we broke even. And during those five years, many of us did not sleep very well. It was quite a paradigm shift. A chance to look at pathology in a new and a fresh way. It took a lot of courage, a lot of dreaming. We saw what the commercial labs did. We knew that we could do it better than they did. We had to provide something of moral value, namely education. We had an open door policy about teaching them about any individual test. I will show you how to do it. We became known as being very receptive, very collegial. All of us had to take a step back and rethink sort of our approach in terms of service and laboratory medicine. We were not smart enough to, in the beginning to see the thing, all of the things that we needed to do. One day the phone was ringing and ringing and ringing. But we certainly were responsive. It happened to be July 24th. The physician in California said, why don't you ever answer your phone? Well, because it's Pioneer Day. And we did it in a way that we made relatively few mistakes. And the next day, we were answering the phone every single day. AERUP would not exist without John Matson. John is one of the most confident individuals I know. He knew everybody, not only locally, but around the country. When all the facts say you can't succeed, John succeeds. He had the ability to convince us this was the right thing. My best friend is a psychiatrist. And he said, John, you are the most functional OCD I have ever known. It takes a lot of courage and take a lot of drive. All the things which John very much had plenty of. When he got an idea, he went for it. And he set a great example to all of us because he worked so hard. He'd be in the lab at four in the morning and not leave till midnight. Every Wednesday night, he advanced his academic career by not going to bed. Every staff meeting, he'd look over at him and he was asleep. He'd stay up all night writing his scientific papers so that he could get published. But at the end of the presentation or the staff meeting, you know, he'd stand up and have a few good comments about what we talked about, totally refreshed. If you had a tough meeting with John, you wanted to schedule it on a Thursday had high expectations to himself, but also to others. One of the toughest guys I've ever worked with, <laughs> which I say with respect and pride. He was able, he was hardworking. The one person that had the foresight. His ability to really understand the economics of the time. He probably saw the big picture before anybody else did. And my vision was enhanced by the fact that I had very, very capable colleagues. Stern and strict, very kind, and very concerned about all of us in the lab. He was tough and tough-minded and rambunctious, but he was generous of heart. That's a nice combination. He was the vice president, actually a very senior leader of the university, and I was this green-as-grass dean at that time. But he never treated me that way. He was always so generous and open to talk about issues. When I first was working in the lab, John came in and 
had to sort of interrupt us and say, in, in so many words, get back to work. And he pointed his finger at us, but he had a bump on his finger, on his index finger. It's not there anymore. There was a little bit of it there. John would put his finger as an emphasis of what I was saying. Carl, just do it. Was I scared of John? Yes. Did I have confidence in him? Yes. And I know that they used to say, if he points the finger at you, you better do it. In the early days, we needed someone like John, confident, unafraid to fail, able to convince everyone that he was going to be successful with this venture. As the baton was passed to Carl, Carl was more collaborative, and that allowed us to switch gears to a different style. So I grew up in very much of a business entrepreneurial family. We used to follow my dad as a youngster. He used to meet with the janitors first. And I used to say to him, well, why do you want to meet with the janitors? And he said, Carl, why do you think this place is clean? Why do you think this place is warm? Nice place to be at? It's because of the janitor's work. He's curious about who you are and what you're bringing to the world. So I learned about the, the team effort, uh, the importance of respecting everyone and acknowledging that everybody has a part. He knew the employees. He wanted them to be happy. He wanted them to be productive. And he was known immediately for his walkabouts, where he would actually go into the laboratory, into the different office areas. And he demanded the best of himself, but he also expected that of others. Carl treats us like family. Every Wednesday, I take the employees for a walk to encourage them to get out of the lab and to enjoy the beautiful nature we have. And it gives me an opportunity to get to know the employees a little bit more. He obviously enjoys and likes people. He's got a genuine smile on his face as much as Norwegians are allowed to smile. I've a number of times been asked, you know, what is the eternal investment for keeping the employees healthy and happy? And you can never measure that in monies. And he just has the natural qualities of dealing with people at all levels. He's this way with everyone. The caring attitude that the company has towards employees, this caring attitude will transfer to what they do and the service they do to the patients. The employee-centered culture at ARUP is about Dr. Shellsburg. ARUP developed this wonderful work-life balance. It's sort of clears your mind. He really set a standard that we all worked toward. ARUP was recognized as being one of the 100 best companies in the United States by Fortune magazine. I put that at Carl's feet. He is a marvelous representative of ARUP. Personally, so disciplined. An optimist. He's polite, he's considerate. The Renaissance man. Very much a people person, and he has great humility. He wasn't one that would want the glory for himself. He's just an endearing human being. I think to myself, I am very fortunate that he is a colleague and a friend. The world should have more Dr. Shellsburg. I don't think anyone in their wildest dreams would have thought that the REP would develop into what it is today. Our founders created a base from which we can grow. I feel like ARUP is standing on their shoulders. I don't think any one individual could have thought of or planned what it is that's happened. It is a team effort. John and I and others were determined we're going to succeed. It was a wonderful combination between the two of them to accomplish what they were able to accomplish. Multiple universities have visited the ARUP. Do you realize how many of those medical schools and universities tried to do what ARUP did? Not one university has been able to do that. And none of them succeeded. Another big factor in their success is how they treat their employees. They've won many awards for this, and it's clear when you see the personalities of the leaders, both in Carl and John, how this was developed from the very beginning and they just made it happen. It was not easy for them to take this kind of crazy idea and really build it into this world-class company. What it is that I'm most proud of, it's the whole of the thing. It's the various components. Perhaps I'm most proud of the culture which I helped to develop, where we value and respect that everyone is acknowledged, that they are an important part of the team, and where the employees enjoy coming to work. We go for the highest quality in medical care. Why do we do that? Because of our founders. 
If we could clone them, we'd clone them. <laughs> They're amazing.